I'm looking forward, pleasurable expectation. We all feel it, but how do we feel it when we don't know what's coming or when it's coming? Are we all secretly psychic? Probably not, but maybe you are. But the real cause that fuels our curious brains and our sense of pleasure from the unknown is actually the hormone dopamine. So we all have this dope, or we all have this hormone called dopamine. Um, it is mostly known as the happiness hormone, but I think it would be better labeled as the addiction hormone. And I have my own dopamine story. I recently tore my right ACL, and my life instantly shifted from being full of activity and exercise to suddenly having to sit at home alone all the time. And I was feeling these feelings of deep, unexplainable, almost uncontrollable sadness. So I did some research, and I found that I probably wasn't getting enough dopamine release. And I took some action. I found that this dopamine release causes a different shift in our everyday life. So we have to regulate our dopamine release so that it can either benefit or harm our everyday life. Um, first I'll talk about what dopamine is, and then I'll talk about the harms to our everyday life, and then the benefits. So first, what is dopamine? Dopamine is a neuromodulator that is involved in our memory, our pleasurable reward, and motivation, according to an article from the Cleveland Clinic, which is a nonprofit medical center in 2018. The first thing we need to understand for this presentation about dopamine is that we have a baseline level of dopamine, which is partially genetic, but it changes over time based on our experiences. So maybe you know somebody who has endless drive, or maybe you know somebody who's super lazy. This is actually a difference in baseline level of dopamine. Um, so generally, people with higher levels of baseline dopamine are more motivated and more happy. But we don't want to override our system with too much dopamine, which seems kind of counterintuitive. But this is because when we release high amounts of dopamine, we're taking from a fixated amount of dopamine in our brain. And that will actually lower our baseline level of dopamine, causing us to be less happy. So what causes these high amounts of dopamine release is actually the second part of dopamine that we need to understand, which is our dopamine peaks. So these peaks are often occurring from when we partake in activities like exercise or when we take substances like alcohol. Um, these peaks cause a temporary lift in our levels of dopamine, and like I said, it can decrease our general baseline level of dopamine, which is what we don't want. Don't want. So, you know, seems easy enough. Maybe just avoid too much dopamine? Wrong. Remember when I said that dopamine would be better labeled as the addiction hormone? This is because when we do things that take up a lot of dopamine, it actually rewires our brain to rely on whatever that activity or substance is to feel happy again, because our baseline has dropped so low. So let's move away from the addiction talk and let's move to a happier note. So what are some healthy ways that we can use dopamine in our everyday lives that won't override our system? One of my favorites is exercise. Ever heard of runner's high? So when we have runner's high, we're actually getting this high from a brain chemical called endocannabinoids, which is the brain chemical that cannabis mimics. And so when this hormone, or when this chemical is released, we're actually releasing dopamine, according to health psychologist Dr. Kelly McGonigal in her Web 2022 article. So for somebody who enjoys running, on average, they can receive a peak in their, in their levels of dopamine two times above their baseline which is a lot, and it's not too much to override your system. But what about for somebody who doesn't enjoy running? When you partake in exercise that you don't enjoy, you actually can receive little to no dopamine release. So you won't feel as motivated to do it again, it won't be as effective as an exercise. So maybe exercise isn't your thing, but you still want to release dopamine in a happy way. And I have a simple solution, and it's love. Our brains are literally wired to be connected to one another. And so Dr. Schwartz and Dr. Olds, who are Harvard Medical School professors, found that people's brain regions became rich in dopamine when simply shown pictures of people that they love from their article in spring of 2015. And not only when we're shown pictures of people we love, but when we talk about pictures of people, or when we talk about people we love, we can actually receive a release in dopamine. And it gets even better. When we just talk about things that we love for a period of time, we can get a release in dopamine. In fact, I'm probably getting dopamine release right now because I love talking about dopamine. <laughs> so onto some of the negative side effects of dopamine on our every single day lives. So the main way that our dopaminergic system can harm our everyday lives is through its pathways to addiction. 
So when we think of somebody who's addicted to something or in a state of addiction, we don't think of them as being healthy or happy. The National Institute on Drug Abuse, a federal research institute, states that drugs release dopamine in our brains that cause us to get addicted to high